Hello and welcome back to Prison Architect. Previous episode, we lowered the danger level. It's still not perfect, but it is way better than it was before. It is on zero most of the day. And during the night, it goes up a little bit because everyone is sleeping. And when everyone is sleeping, their needs increase. So that's the reason why it goes up a little bit at night. And uh, the next thing that I want to do in this prison is nothing because I have done everything that I wanted to do in this prison. The only real thing that I can still do is I can add prison blocks, which will increase the population of our prison. But I don't want to do that in this prison. Uh, I think this prison is done as it is. I thought it would be nice for a final episode if we went through the prison and we talked about the things that we did and I explain why I did those things. The idea behind this prison is that I was going to build a reform based prison, the Swedish model. The prisoners get plenty of opportunities and freedom to better themselves. Uh, they don't do me any good when they stay locked up and they don't do themselves any good when they stay locked up. So what we want is we want them to learn from their mistakes. We want them to learn new skills that they can use on the outside and we want them out of here and all of that starts with a prison cell so if we take a look at the prison cell we gave them a little room to sleep we gave them a little room to work and we gave them a little room to clean themselves so the bed is pretty comfy they also got a soft pillow they also get fresh clothes uh, once in a while and the place to work is uh, an area where they can do their homework after they have gone to class or they can just sit, draw, write, whatever they want, you know. And uh, what I realized is that communal showers are terrible. You don't want communal showers in your prison. So I gave every prisoner an individual shower where they, where they can clean themselves. Communal showers, you know, you putting a whole bunch of men who are uh, vulnerable because they're naked in a tight space. So of course, it's a dangerous space. Those kinds of areas you want to avoid. So giving everyone an individual shower really helped bringing down the amount of incidents in my prison, I found. So if you take a look here, we see that every cell in the cell block is connected to the central calm room. And the central common room is supposed to represent a living room. This is the place where the prisoners will live their lives. They can uh, talk to other prisoners. They can watch TV. They can go on the internet. They can play games. They can read. And they will spend most of their awake hours here. They can uh, go back to their cells when they uh, have to sleep or when they need a little bit of alone time. But this is their main living area where the 10 prisoners in this cell block can live and they can make it their own. They can do, you know, what they want. So the cells and the calm room combined are a cell block and every prison section. So every walled off area with their own facilities has four cell blocks. So every prison section has a yard, a canteen, a kitchen, a library, a laundry room, a mail sorting area and a cleaning cupboard. So every prison section has a yard and it's not too difficult to build a yard. The only thing I've done here is I kept adding stuff until I got a 10 out of 10 yard. And I also put some extra stuff to make it a little bit prettier. For example, I put grass in the yard. I also uh, put a few flowers here in the middle of this running track and this picnic bench. But those are some extra things that uh, they just look pretty. So other than a yard, every prison section also has a canteen and a kitchen. This kitchen is a little bit larger than usual. This is supposed to be the right size, but this kitchen also feeds other places. For example, this staff area, these uh, solitary areas. So this, uh, this kitchen has a little bit more de demand and that's why it's a little bit larger. And I also got to put some lights over here. So let's do that as well. So they can see better. 
the canteen and the kitchen I built according to a website. So on that website, you can see how many uh, benches you need, how many tables you need, how many serving tables you need, how many fridges, cookers you need uh, to feed a certain amount of prisoners. So I use that website heavily to design these uh, kitchens and the canteens. And I also used that website to design the laundry room. So again, this laundry room is a little bit larger than usual because this one also serves the solitary areas, and not the solitary areas, but the reception. And so this one is also a little bit larger. But the same thing happened here. I used the same website to determine how many laundry machines I need, how many ironing boards I need, how many laundry baskets I need to, uh, you know, satisfy the demand of uh, prisoner uniforms. And the library I built, I haven't really uh, paid attention to it. I don't know if people work in it. I don't know. Uh, I just built it and, you know, it has been here. I don't think it gets much use, the library. So this library does get a little bit more use. There is one person working here. And I also don't know how the lending of books work. I don't know if that mechanic works at all. But uh, yeah, they do have a library in case they want to read. And then the next thing is this mail room where they can sort mail and the mail gets delivered to their prison cells. So they get a little bit more interaction with their family and then of course the cleaning cupboard where prisoners can pick up a mop and a bucket and they can go around cleaning the prison and that is one prison section and one prison section has the facilities needed to satisfy most of the needs of a prisoner and what i can do is i can just copy a whole prison section and i can paste it next to it and it will also satisfy most of the needs of the prisoners that are going to live in that new prison section. So this was a really easy way to expand my prison. And other than this prison section, we also got the central area that can satisfy the other needs of the prisoners and also gives them uh, a bunch of opportunities. So we got this chapel area where prisoners can go to pray and their spirituality needs will be taken care of. We got these cl two classrooms where they can go and they can uh, follow their general education qualification program and the foundation education program, uh, which will give them way more chances on the outside. We got a little bit of an infirmary where we all are also running a program. The Let's see if I can find it. The pharmacological treatment of drug addiction. So people that are addicted to drugs can come over here and they will get a replacement drug in a controlled area uh, which will satisfy their uh, drug need but uh, they will do it in a safe way and uh, if you take a look here we got a whole bunch of parole sessions where uh, they have plenty of opportunities to go on parole if they show that they uh, will behave on the outside world and uh, of course we also built a little fist station area where prisoners can come and uh, the deployment has not been done right here so let's add a few more guards here next to the fist station we got a workshop and this is selfish area and this place is made to make us money so the goods that are produced here the license plates the planks the beds these get sold to the outside world. And the prisoners do get paid when they work here, but it is almost next to nothing. So we should actually at least be paying the minimum wage, maybe even more. And the question is, should you have a workshop? And is prison labor ethical? And when does it become ethical? When does it not become ethical? Should we be paying minimum wage? Should we be paying more than minimum wage? Those are questions to think about, and maybe if you want to build like an ethical prison, a workshop might not be nice. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm also a little bit rambling, digressing. 
anyway so and then next to this we also got a staff room so this is a remote staff room this is the main area for the staff and uh, this is where the deliveries come in this is where the storage is this is their main staff room where they can uh, talk eat when they first come to work and uh, you know we also got the offices around there also the security area is around here but i put a remote staff room here because uh, when uh, someone has to take a break they don't have to walk all the way over here uh, the walking takes a lot of time and before they make their way back again it is like uh, <clears throat> a lot of time will be passed will have passed and uh, we want staff rooms closer to the areas where they work so i also put the staff room over here so they don't have to walk too far away to take breaks this these areas were medium security areas and this is a max security area and it looks exactly the same as the medium security so nothing special there and uh, i don't take in max security prisoners because max security prisoners are really troublesome these are mostly people that have caused so much trouble in medium security that they have been upgraded to max security and these aren't new intakes so these are uh, old medium security prisoners uh, i don't want to deal with max security prisoners so because they are they give me a headache so we got the medium security prisoners and we got the max security prisoners but we also got the minimum security prisoners and the minimum security area does look a whole bunch different than the other two areas so first of all this place is more crowded the minimum security prisoners don't stay as long so they don't need a permanent space they just have a temporary bed and they also cause less trouble which means more of them can be put together and uh, you know for example this uh, canteen is also a lot bigger so uh, you know you can have like huge canteens where uh, no trouble occurs because minimum security prisoners are way more well behaved than uh, their brethren their higher security brethren uh, so the minimum security prisoners also live in dormitories and the dormitories also have kind of like that living room structure where this path in the middle contains some items where they can have fun, where they can hang out, where they can read, they can listen to the radio, they can play some table tennis table. Uh, uh, also, every uh, dormitory has kind of like a room, but uh, the room is shared by two people. And uh, every dormitory has a shared toilet and a shower area. And the dormitories are modeled after the dormitories in the series Orange is a New Black. So if you watch that series, you might recognize this, where uh, it has the same structure like this. And of course, the minimum security area also has a bunch of facilities that satisfy the needs. Uh, the library, laundry, and the yard, the calm room. So they have one shared calm room. Not every dormitory has their own calm room. But uh, every dormitory has a bunch of items that uh, you know that you can have fun with, that you can uh, use, and uh, they also have a gymnasium. So that's a little bit of an extra thing that I gave the minimum security because they are so well behaved, because they uh, you know uh, didn't commit crimes that were too bad. I gave them also a gymnasium where they can work out. They can, uh, you know, do whatever they want. They can do some yoga. They can uh, pump some iron, go on a run, learn to fight. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do, you can do that there. So we got the minimum security prisoners who are well behaved. They are great. I love them. These are my favorite prisoners. And next to the minimum security prisoners, we have the scum of the earth, the supermax. These are people that have committed a murder in my prison. And I dislike these people the most. So if we take a look at their cells, we see that they are pretty luxurious. So they even got a radio. They got a pet bird. You know, they, these are luxurious cells. And the reason why I did that is because uh, these guys are not going to be leaving their cells a lot. So all of the needs that have to be taken care of 
are going to be taken care of in this cell. And uh, when every need is taken care of, they will cause a lot less trouble. Now, they are uh, most of the time in lockup. I did give them a canteen. And I also give them gave them a yard so they can get a little bit of fresh air. But that is the only time they will go outside. And most of the time they will be sitting inside of their cells. Like they deserve. You know, I don't judge anything that you have done before you came to this prison. But if you start murdering people after you came to this prison, then you and I have a, have a problem. And you are going to be put in Supermax. And in Supermax, there are a lot of scary people. First of all, uh, the, the other prisoners and also the guards. So we got uh, armed guards patrolling this area and they are on free fire. So if you even look at them wrong, they are going to shoot you in the face. And that's the only way you can deal with Supermax prisoners. And in the yard, we even got snipers. So and to protect people from scum like this, we built the protective custody area. And this is the area where prisoners that are in a lot of danger get locked up. So, for example, Diego, the snitch, and uh, Leopold, the ex-law enforcement, are going to be put in here. And the protective custody cells are nothing special. They are just like medium security cells. But this whole area is separated from the rest of the prison. So the protective custody prisoners have everything they need in here. And they never have to go outside of this prison area. And they don't have to mix with other prisoners where they might get attacked. This is a safe place for the snitches and the ex-law enforcement. And of course, this area is again a supermax area. There is no shortage of scums in my prison. So we had to build a whole extra area for these scumbags. And then if we go left, we have to build one more infirmary, one more staff room. And the dreaded solitary where prisoners that have misbehaved are put in. What has this guy done, for example? So this guy has destroyed some stuff and that's the reason why he's put in here. And then we got to the saddest part of our prison, the death row area. The place where we executed one person and that person was innocent and I still feel guilty about it but still and we don't have any death row prisoners at the moment and uh, that's the way it is with death row prisoners they're few and far between and uh, most of the time they will also uh, be released if they go to death row appeals or their death centers will be overturned and they will become max security prisoners so even if you get the death row prisoners doesn't mean you get to execute them uh, and yeah that is the prison so it was a really fun series i really enjoyed myself i had a lot of fun building this prison this is a prison that i'm proud of during this series we also had to sell our previous prison because everything was going terrible in the prison riots every day right and i didn't encounter that problem in this prison so i'm uh, i'm really happy with this and the next thing that i want to do is i'm going to play through the campaign so there are only five missions not a lot so i'm going to play through the campaign uh, i played a few levels it was a lot of fun so i want to play more of it and uh, uh, we got to 285 prisoners so we got capacity for 285 uh, there is, I think, an achievement when you get a thousand prisoners, or it might have been a five hundred. I don't, I don't remember. But I also want to build a prison that uh, can, uh, with which we can get that achievement. And uh, it's going to be a different prison than this. It's going to be more of an American-style prison. It's going to be a for-profit prison where we're going to put prisoners in, uh, where we're going to put two prisoners in each cell instead of. Uh, Everyone giving their own luxurious cells, right? So we, I'm also planning on doing that. So uh, a challenge where we get a thousand prisoners in our prison. And, uh, you know, I will see you guys then. So uh, subscribe if you don't want to miss those series. Also leave a like. 
and come, come Shulia with the algorithm and you would build me out and bye bye.